Coming up on the FRC Open Alliance Show 2491, No Mythic from Minnesota is back to give us all the awesome updates they've been doing so far. Uh, you know, obviously completed CAD and it looks phenomenal, but we're going to be diving into some of their mechanisms, how that's been working, including uh, they've got their climb working as well, so can't wait to see that, and some crazy cycle times that they're targeting as well, too. Going through their prototypes and how they got there is great. I'll be going through other design updates. Uh, they'll be talking about some of their uh, programming side of things, how they're looking at doing the odometry, and then utilizing also a ton of flight sensors as a backup to that. Uh, as well too. Also be checking out uh, their awesome uh, field that serves as a magnet center for other teams as well too and talking a little bit more about how they're planning getting ready for their week zero and week one events. Let's see what their updates are here on the Open Alliance show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members and also in partnership with the following. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Go ahead free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. Let's welcome back once again to the FRC Open Alliance Show 2491. No Mythic coming in from Minnesota. And it's great to have you all back. I know, you know, reading on your build log here, a lot of awesome progress has been happening. So I can't wait to dive into it. If you don't mind, reintroduce yourselves. I know we got somebody else joining us later too. Uh, but let's talk more uh, about you all. And then let's hop right into uh, some of your awesome build and design updates. Yeah. Hey there. My name's Liam. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the team captain here on 2491 No Mythic. I've been a student here uh, for about five years. Hi, uh, I'm Aiden. I'm the design captain on No Mythic. Um, I use he, him pronouns. And, uh, yeah. I'm Clover. I use they, them pronouns. And I do, I'm manufacturing, or I'm the production captain. Um, and I've been on this team for five years. Yeah. So this year we have a couple of really ambitious goals. One of the first goals that we have is for Coral by our first competition, which is week one. Um, we'll see how feasible that really ends up being once we get our hands on an actual robot, but that's what we're shooting for. Um, additionally, we're looking for about 15 to 20 Coral in a match, including auto, um, which rounds out to be about 6.7 seconds per cycle uh, if we're getting a couple in, uh, in autonomous as well, and you're assuming we have a climb. Um, and then we're also trying to get to Einstein. Now that might sound really, really quite crazy, but the goal is that we have something to aspire towards, to look to achieve, and a competitive greatness to, to shoot for the stars. Um, and we'll see where that ends up getting us. Now, 6.5 second cycles might sound really, really short to you. Um, and so the way that we're gonna do that is by doing really good algae pickup, coral placement. Um, we're trying to have a killer drive train this year. And we're looking for really quick uh, alignment to the reef with programming. Um, and then a really quick climb at the end. So we have a lot of time to recycle. So for those 6.5 second cycles on there, are you looking at maybe only scoring on a certain level in order to get that quick? Or is that for all levels? That is hopefully for all levels. Our elevator will move in about half a second. Yeah. Um, up and then half a second down. Cool. So, well, I look yeah. forward to uh, talking more about your elevator in a little bit first, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's dive into some prototypes. Um, if you want me to get a couple. All right. Uh, so... Uh, here is a little video playing of a few of the prototypes we've been working on. A few of them I think we probably showed up last time, but um, the main things we've been prototyping the last few weeks are our end effectors and our climbing. Um, so right now you're seeing a little loop of videos with our funnel mechanism, the then handoff from our funnel to our coral end effector, then our coral end effector actually shooting it. Um, one thing that uh, we definitely really put in the time to work out in prototyping and in geometries was really that handoff. It's not something that we've done in recent years, you know, really have to worry about a handoff between mechanisms. And so prototyping that and making sure that we were confident in that going into the design was a really big thing for us. Um, so, yeah, um, moving on, I guess. Yeah. Uh, here is our algae end effector. Um, once again, a prototype. Um, this was one of those things as well that uh, we've gone through a lot of different prototyping iterations on. Um, but the main thing that we were using with it um, and the main thing we were trying to prototype is the geometries of being able to pick up a coral, or, I'm sorry, place a coral and pick up an algae at the same time. It's something that we've really been striving to do with this robot and um, has been a really big determining factor of a lot of our design work. So what you're seeing here is us with a prototyping elevator um, actually test the geometries that we're hoping to run 
Um, I, and that's I love been, that elevator, by the way. That prototype elevator is so cool. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a team just like manually do something like that. That's really awesome. Yeah, uh, when the season started, we uh, figured that uh, we needed something to lift our prototypes, but didn't have the time or resources to get a COTS elevator. Um, so this was our solution, um, and it's been working great for us. Um, so yeah, so this is those um, geometries uh, showing us uh, both in the processor, and then eventually we'll show a little picture of it in, going into the barge. Um, but once again, the, the big thing with this is we really wanted to try and get that um, placing coral and removing algae just as quick as possible and at the same time. Um, we noticed it would be a really big uh, advantage in the, even just those first six cycles, just to be able to do both at the same time. Um, but then with those six cycles, then scoring into the barge, this was something that I think we talked about last time that it was more of a, if we can do it, we will do it. Um, but you know, as weeks have been progressing and we're seeing the value of algae in this game, um, one thing we really wanted to look into is, yeah, how easily could we do it? Um, so on the screen, uh, you'll see this blue bar uh, at the bottom uh, next to these two pictures of the algae and effector and an algae being shot. This was our way of representing um, just quickly, like in reference to the algae and effector where the barge would be at full extension. And this was our way uh, as well as in real life uh, shooting it um, to determine that yes, our end effector prototype, right? Which is severely underpowered compared to the final version would in fact be able to store in the barge, um, which is really great for us to see in big confidence booster. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and then looking at the climb, um, recently we got the climb to actually kind of function, which is really cool. Um, so in this initial prototype, you're going to notice that the weight is unbalanced. Actually, uh, there will be an image coming up right here. Um, we had to add this little foot. It's kind of blurry. It's kind of hard to see, and I apologize for that. We had to add this little foot to get it to fully pivot and stay in the robot the way we wanted to. But then, in, we, instead of having a foot, we raised the fulcrum up a little bit, which allowed the cage to come in exactly the way we wanted to. And so in this image, um, you're going to see it. Um, I'm actually going to skip to this one. This one has 20 pounds on the robot, and you'll see um, that, we're, that we're bringing it in. Actually, we're doing this with a worm gear, which means, it, I mean, do you want to talk about the worm gear? Yeah, so last year, uh, this is using a gearbox from last year's climber we had, where we identified that being able to say that our, uh, not elevator, our climber can't be back driven is a major advantage, especially when you're only lifting yourself off the ground a few inches. Once again, in a similar game where we're not actually climbing that high, uh, we determined that some method of making sure that once we've climbed a little bit, we're never sinking back down would be really important. So in that prototype, we completely reused that, uh, that climber. And we're thinking of using a very similar mechanism uh, with a worm gear uh, for this iteration of a climber. Um, and yeah, another thing that I'd like to point out with this prototype is, you know, we made a big note that it had 20 pounds on it. Um, this prototype uh, is made completely of polycarb. And so, you know, as we were climbing, we would notice that uh, the actual hooks uh, started to bend in ways that weren't awesome. Uh, and so we're planning on making those pieces out of aluminum to start our next iterations of prototyping. Um, but that's why we weren't able to get a ton of weight on it uh, because we were worried it would break. Um, uh, this here uh, is a little bit of an extension of our algae end effector prototype. Um, so one thing that we also noticed is that, you know, this algae and effector that we're calling the big C, it's pretty big. And so in its current position on the robot with the geometries that work, it lays like a foot outside frame perimeter. So this is our mechanism idea uh, to be able to then deploy uh, our coral and algae and effector. Um, so this is a really cool mechanism that uh, was put together uh, by a mentor and student. Um, and what this is, is it is the motor that actuates the pivoting arm down is actually the same motor that actually spins the algae end effector. And so what ends up happening is because of the friction in the system before uh, it's been deployed, um, spinning the motor only actually moves down the arm. But once it's fully deployed and hits its hard stop, um, then it's actually able to rotate the roller. Um, so this was our way of being able to have a quick and very simple and light mechanism to um, uh, deploy the algae end effector. Yeah. Um, so here are some things about our drivetrain. So our drivetrain is really low to the ground, um, about three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. Um, so that's the first thing we changed about um, our drivetrain this year. We also um, changed our gearing on our swerve. So we changed only one pinion, um, and it actually is making us a lot faster. Um, and we could have, you know, bought a bunch of gears and. Um, done a lot of different things, but it would have cost us hundreds of more dollars. Um, that really wasn't in the budget. 
Um, you can also see some wiring diagrams we have. So this is a diagram we use um, to like show what um, and where our motors and um, different things on the robot um, will be placed. Um, and this is helpful for even new students. Um, so everyone can see what they're doing next. Yeah, and this is done on a program called Fritzing, um, which we provide resources for on our GitHub. Um, so always feel free to reach out about that on our own. Um, moving on to RobotCAD. Yeah. So um, last time we showed our crayon CAD, and this is what our final crayon CAD really looks like. Um, once again, let that uh, single elevator, two end effectors, a funnel, and a climber. Um, and this is what the current robot looks like. Um, so with this, uh, you know, few weeks passing by and all of this work done, one thing that we sadly realized is that our funnel and climber mechanism um, wouldn't work. Uh, we looked at a lot of geometries and really tried, um, but what ended up happening is that it just wouldn't work with the geometries. So what we ended up doing is then developing a, like you saw earlier, uh, separate climbing mechanism, which seems pretty similar to what a lot of teams are doing. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing that is worth noting about our funnel and climber though, is that to be able to fit the funnel how we wanted to fit it and everything else, um, we would actually not have the space to climb, right? The funnel would get in the way of the cage. And so one thing that we're still doing is the funnel still actuates, but this time it moves up and then out of the way of the climber and cage. Oh, a little too much. Um, so that we actually can successfully climb without you know, breaking the rest of our robot. Um, it, so you know, How is that actually, still, is that mechanical or pneumatic? Yeah, mechanical. So um, what we're doing uh, is we're using an over center uh, latch type mechanism on it. And then if you rotate a little bit, um, you can see we're just putting a Neo 550 on a little spool. So the idea is, is that we spool in a little bit, you know, pull it over center, and then gravity and some springs will collapse the rest of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, do you want to quick talk about manufacturing? Yeah. Um, so when um, we are manufacturing, we use money.com to keep ourselves organized. Um, this is very helpful when we are um, giving up tasks at the beginning of practice, um, that if someone doesn't know the length, width, height of what they are cutting, um, all that information is going to be in Monday. Um, another really big thing we use is Polytool, longtime sponsor, and um, they are producing over 300 parts for us. So this is sheet metal that they would bend and cut. We have 57 unique pieces, so they are doing a lot for us this year. Yeah, and uh, Quality Tool is also a really helpful sponsor because they're doing the cages for two different fields in, our, in the Twin Cities this year. Um, and so they're producing the top brackets for those. So we just wanted to give them a huge shout out. Um, now we're gonna move on to programming. Hi, my name is Rowan. I see him pronouns. I'm the programming captain on team 2491 No Mythic. I'm going to talk a bit about what the programming team's been doing. So, while the build has been developing prototypes and manufacturing, oh, okay. um, while build has been developing prototypes and manufacturing, programming has been creating outlines of code for every subsystem in preparation for receiving the robot. Additionally, we've been developing code to automatically line up our robot with the individual reef balls on the field. We plan to use path planner, and or path planner with our odometry to pathfind to the individual reef balls on the field. But what you also see here is that we've developed a backup method in case our odometry encounters hiccups during competition to line up with the reef balls using time of flight sensors. So our robot can approach the reef using time of flight sensors and also line up side to side. Last week, programming received from build the, our finished practice bot drivetrain. So we took it to the HCPA practice field to test it. Yeah. Um, so the HCPA field is a field that is a local resource to all Twin Cities teams. It's something that we set up. Um, Mark and Toby are two of our mentors who take this on every year. Um, this is also done in association with the Minneapolis Urban Robotics Association, or MURA for short. Um, and the Hmong College Prep Academy gives the space for that. And that's a huge resource for us. We don't get to use that every day. We have to use that about once a week. And because of the, um, the split in resources with April tags, it's been really, really important to us. Um, so yeah, that's what we have for you today.
So uh, I want to ask about this field real quick. Um, you say you only can use like once a week. Is that because it's split amongst other teams? Or like how does that work in terms of uh, separating uh, with all the other teams that are using this? Absolutely. Um, so we can only use it because, uh, once a week because it's, it's split with other teams. Um, even though we provide a lot of the resources, uh, it, the building's just not open that often because of the way the gotcha. school works. Okay. Um, and, and something I want to ask you in that in particular is like from creating that, you know, I think one of the great things we're seeing all around, uh, you know, the world, honestly, are these kind of magnet centers, right, for especially these large metros to bring in uh, teams for that as well. You know, for other teams that might be looking at getting something like that started, any advice that you have for like teams or programs or like want to create something like that? So the hardest part is getting the physical building space for that. Um, the, the actual field and the field setup can be done really cheaply with plywood and volunteers and all of that, but getting, getting a physical permanent space is the hardest part. Um, so looking for schools, looking for sponsors, um, getting hub groups together where you have a bunch of teams working on this together, all pooling money to get this resource for the community. It's really important to have a full field now more than ever, or really a, a half field that's permanent, um, because of April tags and what that does for programming and what that does for drivers. You have a, a week zero event coming up, the Blue Twilight Week Zero, uh, very shortly, and then you're playing Week One as well too, up in Duluth, right? So, like, what is what is your next steps really look like to get ready for that Week Zero event? And then between Week Zero and Week One, what are kind of your key uh, things that you want to get done? Um, we want to get done a robot, um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. which um, is a lot of work. So we're hoping to get our practice done, practice bot done first, which can go to those Week Zero events, um, and to have that at the events and then having um, our uh, comp bot robot here that programmers can use and drivers can use to then get ready for Duluth. Um, so we are as good as we possibly could be. I really hope, by the way, that we get to see some of the cool purple aesthetic in the uh, actually completed robot. It looked really cool in CAD, so we're looking forward to that. And speaking of aesthetics as well too, who's the uh, mascot you got in front of you? Um, this is Frank. Um, he has been on our team for about three years, and he is our emotional support unicorn. <laughs> awesome. Well, Frank and all of uh, No Mythic, thank you so much for uh, coming on to share your progress. I can't wait to see how you do uh, in week zero and week one as well. Your team has been really just kind of growing so much, uh, both from a uh, robot side of things and just a community building side. So best of luck to you, and make sure you're following their build blog out on Chief Delphi to get all their great updates. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Andy Mark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.